Hello everyone and welcome back to Brackets Academy. In this video, we'll set up our Ionic environment and we will take a look at the structure of an Ionic 4 project. So let's get started. First thing, we need to make sure we have Node.js installed in our operating system. If you don't have Node.js installed, you can head over to their website and download the installer for your operating system. In my case, I'm using a Mac, so I'll uh, download and install the Mac installer. And after we are done installing Node.js, we can head over to our terminal and run the command node dash dash version to see what version of node we're using uh, and if uh, node installed properly on your system. So you can see in my case here, I'm using version 8.11.3. So next we're gonna go, go ahead and install Ionic. Uh, and if you're on Mac, you run the command sudo npm install dash g, which means a global flag and we'll put in the word Ionic. And if you're on a Windows, it's recommended that you do this through the uh, admin command prompt. So after uh, the installation process is finished, we can uh, restart our console and make sure Ionic is installed by running Ionic dash dash version and it will give us the version of Ionic. Okay, let's go ahead and generate our first Ionic application by running Ionic start my app blank dash dash type equals Angular. So using the Ionic CLI, there's a bunch of options we can put in. And, and in our case, we have the type flag, which equals to Angular, which means that our application will be generated using Angular. But there are also some other options we can put in there, like we can generate an Ionic 1 project, or we can generate a project containing Capacitor or Cordova tools, and uh, so on. And if we head over to the Ionic site, we can see that we have three different starter templates that they offer us, like the tabs, the menu, and the one that we will be using, which is the blank template. Now let's head over back to the terminal and cd into our tutorials folder, uh, because this is where we will generate our application. And we can go ahead and run Ionic Start, our first app, which will be the name of our application, and then add blank dash dash type equals Angular. So during the generation of this process, you will be asked a couple of questions. For example, whether you want to use the Ionic Pro SDK. And in our case, we'll say no, but later on, you can always add this into your project. So I have opened up our project inside Visual Studio Code. And here we can take a look at the project structure. Now I'm only going to touch up on the files and folders that I think you're most likely to get in contact while developing Ionic applications. And for the rest of the files, we might just briefly scratch the surface because I don't want to overwhelm you guys with too much information. So let's take a look at the source directory since this will be the place where the majority of our application will live and will be developed. So the source directory contains files such as the index.html file, configuration files for tests, an asset folder to store our images, and the main app directory where the majority of our application will live. The app directory contains the root app component and the root app module as well as additional directories that contain the app features such as the pages which in our case is the home page and we can also have additional tools such as components, services, directives and so on. Speaking about additional tools, Ionic CLI can help us generate new features for our application using the Ionic generate command and by using the Ionic generate command a selection prompt is going to be displayed which will list the available features that can be generated such as pages, components, services, modules, directives and more. Now let's head over to our home folder and take, take a look at the files that were generated there. We have home.module, this is the file where our dependencies for our home page will live. Next we can move on to our home.html page, this will be the template for our home page. We have home.page.stss. This will be the file where the styling for our homepage lives. We have home.page.ts. This is the file that will contain the logic for our homepage component. And last, we have home.page.spec.ts. This is used for testing, and we will definitely touch upon this subject in the future. Beside our root app component and root app module, in the app folder, we also have app routing.module.ts, which helps us set up the routing for our application. Inside the team folder, we have variables.stss, and this is the place where we can easily change our application style. And lastly, we can touch upon package.json. This is the place that contains all the project dependencies, like other libraries or plugins and their version and so on. Now that we have some knowledge of the structure of Ionic 4 application, we can go ahead and use Ionic Serve so we can serve our application in our browser. When we are ready and satisfied with our application, we can build it using the Ionic build command. We can also add the dash dash prod flag here, which will compress and optimize our application when it's ready for production. 
Ionic build will generate a www folder and if we take a look inside we can see there's a bunch of JS files. Now the way this works is even though we develop our application using TypeScript, browsers still don't support TypeScript so whenever we write TypeScript, when we build our application, every .ts file will be translated into JavaScript with something called transpiling. And for those of you who are not familiar with transpiling, it is basically taking a source code written in one language and transforming it into another language that has a similar level of abstraction. Going back to the build command, I should also point out that this command would only build our application for the web. If you want to build uh, the application for Android or iOS, we'll need to use Cordova or Capacitor. So in my next video, we'll take a look at installing and adding Cordova and Capacitor to our application and building our application with Cordova or Capacitor. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new. Subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one.